On today's video, we're going to be checking in on the Wheel of Death. Hey there, outdoor YouTubers. Today we're out at the camp, and we're going to be checking in on the Wheel of Death. Alright, so we're going to check the wheel of death here in the sauna and sure enough we've got some trespassers uh-huh we're gonna have to clean them out of there so what we use to extract the mice out of the wheel of death is an ice fishing skimmer works really good uh, so any of you ice fishermen out there you know you don't have to run out and buy anything you're gonna have one you probably got a, a dozen extra laying around the house because if you're like most ice fishermen uh, a well-meaning relative gives you one for Christmas every year you know you, you get a new one every year and if you're not an ice fisherman go ahead and ask a friend or relative that is an ice fisherman if they got any extra of these laying around and they'll probably tell you yeah yeah I got an extra one laying around um, you gave me one for Christmas three years ago so you don't have to buy anything you know somebody somebody's gonna have some extras for you anyways so you just kind of scoop them out of there like that and toss them in the woods. And you know, if you remember um, from my first Wheel of Death video, it was called A Better Mouse Trap, The Wheel of Death. You know, if you saw that, you remember uh, that we actually put rum in here in the bottom to kind of let the mice get drunk before they die. It, you know, it's a, it's a real humane way of going about things. Uh, so if you haven't seen that video, check it out gives you a little bit of history and you know some people might think that's kind of a waste of rum but uh, it was really really cheap rum in fact when we get in the camp I'll, I'll show you uh, the rum that we put in here uh, you'll kind of understand what I'm talking about but you know not only is it a really humane way to kill a mouse you know let him get drunk before he dies um, also now what you're doing you're taking this dead mouse, you know, like I said, and we kind of, we pitch them in the woods. And so you've got a rum impregnated dead mouse right here. And then what can happen is like, you know, like a coyote or a wolf comes along. And that's like candy to a coyote or wolf, you know, a, a rum impregnated mouse. So, you know, they'll eat it. And then, of course, now the wolf or the coyotes maybe a little drunk right from eating that rum impregnated mouse and you know that's uh that's when fatal accidents happen you know i'm just saying so that's another plus about you know about using rum in the wheel of death yeah so you know we got all the mice out of it now and uh, i'm gonna rebate it it needs a little rebating so i just take this spoon peanut butter and all you got to do is just kind of smear peanut butter on this Miller Lite Packer commemorative can. And there we go. And that gets it all set up. Now I highly recommend that you that you mark the peanut butter, like we wrote mouse on here, because you know you don't want to accidentally like grab the spoon and do up a sandwich or anything you know because this spoon has been all over this can where mice have been playing around so so whatever peanut butter you use mark it mouse all right yeah so the story with that really cheap rum that we put in the wheel of death my brother-in-law milton he's notoriously frugal and you know he comes up from green bay and he hunts with us and we told him you know yeah grab some rum down there pick up some rum and he goes to this weird, uh, like, discount place down there in Green Bay. I think it's called, like, Family Dollar Liquor or something. And so he gets this rum from uh, Family Dollar Liquor. And, you know, I really can't blame him uh, for getting this rum. Because, really, the only criteria we gave him was get some, some kind of, like, sailor seagoing kind of rum you know because those, those sailors you know they know how to make pretty good rum right so uh you know we figured it would be like 
Captain Morgan, Admiral Nelson, or maybe Sailor Jerry's. But uh, instead, he, he picks up this stuff at that family dollar liquor, and it's called Cabin Boy Larry's. So, you know, just to kind of give you guys an idea, you know, like here's Captain Morgan, you know. He's got it going on. He's got a lot of bravado there, right? And then, you know, here's Admiral Nelson. You know, he's he's pretty distinguished looking. Or even like, you know, Sailor Jerry's, right? You know, that's all right too. But then this is what Milton gets. Cabin Boy Larry's Spice Drum. You know, he doesn't have any of that bravado going on. He doesn't have any of that distinguishedness going on, right? Uh, you know, leave it to Milton to pick up some rum, you know, like the lowest ranking rum you can get on a sailing ship, you know, the Cabin Boy Larry's. In fact, quite honestly, it sort of looks like Cabin Boy Larry's maybe has like sea scurvy, and it kind of also looks like he's puking in his mop bucket, and I wouldn't doubt it's because he drank too much Cabin Boy Larry's spiced rum. And, you know, I mean, check this out. It it actually, it looks like a milk carton, this Cabin Boy Larry's. And here's a, you know, another weird thing. It actually has an expiration date, like milk. I mean, what kind of rum has an expiration date? You know, another thing, you know, not only does it look like a milk carton this cabin boy larry's but it actually on the back of this rum slash milk carton thing it actually has you know missing pictures of missing people on the back you know i mean how weird is that but these aren't missing children you know back here these are missing fugitives from the law uh, so that's really weird to me and, and it even says back here, uh, you know, it, it doesn't say like, you know, if you've seen this person, contact authorities or whatever. It actually says, if you're drinking rum with this person. So, you know, the people that sell Cabin Boy Larry's, they actually kind of think you're going to be like drinking rum with like fugitives from the law. Uh, that's, you know, just to kind of give you an idea, this is, this is some pretty cheap stuff. That's why it wound up going in the mouse trap, and you know, it, it's kind of become a thing here at the camp. You know, we don't even really refer to this as Cabin Boy Larry's anymore. Uh, we just call it mouse trap rum. You know what I mean? It's like some be like, "Oh, hey, let's you know, should we have a rum and coke or whatever?" And you know, the other guy will be like, "Yeah, uh, the only thing that's left is that mouse trap rum," you know, which is this. And then that saying's kind of spread to other things. You know, other cheap booze um, or even cheap beer again Milton at the uh, you know family dollar uh, liquor store down in Green Bay he brings up some beer one time and you know I think it was called like Milwaukee's fourth best light uh, second run something it, it was this really super cheap beer and then, again, you know, we don't even refer to it as even cheap beer. We certainly don't call it, uh, you know, Milwaukee's fourth best light second run. You know, we just refer to that as uh, most trap beer. So, you know, anytime there's a really cheap beer, I was like, hey, hey, you can have beer. Like, no, nah. the only thing left is that most trap beer. So it's kind of a little funny saying here at the camp. You know, and actually, most of the guys here at the camp... It, we're really not big drinkers, um, you know, maybe with the exception of uh, our buddy Al that hunts with us, he's he's drank a lot of rum over the years. He's, I, I would bet he's drank more rum than Jimmy Buffett and Captain Jack Sparrow combined, and so he's kind of a connoisseur of rum, and I know he is not a big fan of this Cowboy Larry's. In fact, he kind of considers it scandalous to even call this stuff spiced rum, which, you know, I kind of got to agree. So remember this, guys. Hunt, fish, laugh, repeat. This is Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Thanks for watching, and God bless.